Greetings from Wood Turning with Dick. From Wood Turning with Dick. Ligma Vitae, Mexican. Absolutely lovely. I saw this in the wood store and I just fell in love and I had to have it. I'm not going to lie to you, it cost a pretty penny. But this video is going to be about this section of it. I'm going to show you how I do an off center bulb. So, bulb blank. I'll show you the other side in a minute. It's damn, it's damned heavy. Hang on. Oh, God. All right. Uh, wow. That's covered in wax at the moment. I'm going to cut that off through the bandsaw, run that side through the planer, and then I'll come back to you. Trim down, got my bowl blank, taking the corners off as you saw. Quite a big split and crack up here, but I'll deal with that with super glue and dust in due course. Beautiful, beautiful patterning and colours through here. It's still such a weight, and it's going to retain an awful lot of that weight in a finished piece, which is nice. Now, if you can see my line there of my bowl blank, I want at least 15 mil away from it. Can you visualize that? Reasonable size bowl, usable, rather than just being a decorative piece. Might leave room for a bit of decoration in there. Yeah. Quick measure to the edge. Flop it over. A couple of sacrificial bits of chestnut, previously run through the planer, so they're nice and flat. Both are going to be used in this piece, but initially, I'm going to glue that. It's really going to test the strength of an oily wood, chestnut, and my tight bond, original wood glue. I don't have a screw chuck for the lathe I'm putting this on. So, as you've seen me do previously, I'm going to put a force and a bit down into this piece of wood to hold it on the chuck, and then glue it on. Shove that in my vise for half an hour, then leave it for 24, and I'll come back to you. Quick start and a quick stop, just to make sure I don't fly off and get out of the way. Woohoo! That's gonna be violent. All right, that's all the loose stuff off the bench moved. Give it another try. Okay. That's not too sad. My poor lathe. All I need to do now is hollow a bowl. Probably want to get them rest a little bit closer so I can get a little bit further over for the central point. I've got to say, I've been debating putting a counterweight on this side. Traditionally, with a softer or a lighter or a thinner piece of wood, this would be fine. But that's nearly six kilos. I'm going to have a little try with the chisel. See how well it works starting to turn my bowl <sighs> the glue's strong enough the chestnut's strong enough there's no sign of any cracks I'll give it a go Now, that's going to kill my lathe. I'm going to stick a block of wood on that side. Something nice and heavy. Ideally lignum vitae, but I didn't really want to cut a piece up that's going to be the same distance as that, the same weight as that. Thinking. Got a little block of African blackwood. Would that be enough? It's not heavy enough, I don't think. 
I'm sharing this problem because I'm not going to make out that I'm a perfect turner by any means because I'm far from it if you watch any of my other videos. But it's a problem that I've come across that I want to solve. The African Blackwood, too light, too small. I do have some lead wood kicking around, which too long, too heavy. So that is actually intended to make three pots. So I'm gonna trim that, use the larger part, sit two thirds of that on this end and pray that about evens it out because uh, there's no way I can continue on the lathe. Some, something's gonna break. As you can see, I've glued that on there successfully. I've glued in the corners again, just to give it a little bit more surface to adhere to. And I'm not gonna turn it on yet because the risk of that heavy piece of wood, the risk of it coming flying off while I'm turning the central bit is reasonably high. So I've done it before. I'm not ashamed. I'm gonna duct tape it. Nice bit of tension. Let's spin that up, see if it flies apart or not. Oh, lovely. Not too much wiggle on there at all. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, let's get that whole dug out. I've been having serious fun with super glue and trying to fill this oily wood gaps. Ah, don't look too sad now with a bit of sand sealer on there. Sanded to 400 grit. Incredibly oily wood. Ligna vitae. This bit, this bit particularly. But look at it. It's like marble. Absolutely glorious. This front face is coming down a bit, so the chips you can see out the the top top edge here. Obviously, they're going to disappear with that. But look at that colour in there. Yeah, looks like I've got a little bit more sanding to do on this top corner. Just here, there's a little mark. I don't know if you can see that. To get rid of that. Well, all waxed. All I've got to do now is make the whole of the rest of it, all the other surfaces, polished like that. Okay. Let's strip it down and get this lead wood cut off, get these corners recut off and mount it the other way so I can do the outside. Ooh. Such fun. Just quickly run the belt sander over that to get that a little bit flatter because I need another sacrificial piece of wood, another piece of chestnut so it lays nice and flat on there. I want a little bit of access to my bowl, so when I stop the lathe, I can run my fingers in there, obviously with the bowl stopped, duh, to feel, to gauge how thick my wall is as I'm under, as I'm cutting the bowl on the outside. I'm gonna cheat slightly, forcing a bit in there. If, if you're trying this, a face plate would be a much better idea on there. Get that glued on. Now, what I don't want happening is any glue going in my bowl, so masking tape. Oh, I do like testing tight bond. <laughs> right. I mean, ideally a bigger piece of wood to cover the virtually the entire surface, aside from an area to be able to check the distance of the wall would have been, would have been more ideal. But 
that's the piece of chestnut that I had that size. I've glued it on, I've clamped it well, I've let it dry for 24 hours. I found the center point, I've drilled my forcing bit down in, I put it on the chuck. Chuck's nice and tight, everything's nice and tight. First spin, standing well clear. Look at that! Clay's not even moving! Let's get that taken off real quick and then we can start making this round joy. get to shaping. And after a little bit of sanding to 600 grit, I'm gonna wipe some sander sealer on, as you know I like to. A few cracks and splits here and there. I have filled them with super glue, but I don't think the super glue, super glue gets on very well with the oils in the Ligna Vitae. So I'm gonna hope a bit of sander sealer is gonna get in some of those cracks. They are very fine cracks, to be fair. Look at that, though. Now, there are quite a few turners who like to remove the foot the bit where the chuck holds on to. I like the little foot on there. I think it adds height to the piece. I think it's a nice stable base. So why take it off? I get the lines continue round beautifully, but I'm a fan of leaving them on there. I like people to turn a bowl upside down and see how it was made, not guess. Give that a good chance to dry. And we're gonna carry on sanding up to 3000 grit, a bit of wax, and then we get to turn it round. Hey, transfer to the other lathe because it's big enough now or small enough now that I can put it on this lathe. It's got a nicer chuck. Take my sacrificial bit of wood off and get the first look at what it's going to look like when it's finished. I know you can imagine it, but still, it'd be nice to have a quick look. So in a minute, I'm gonna show you the secret of sanding this top. And it's not with a bit of sandpaper on your fingers like this. And it's not with a drill and a little pad on the end of it. It's actually common sense, but I'll show you the secret in a moment. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna try and put a little V line in the very middle between this gap here. Fingers crossed for me, guys and girls. Need me skew chisel, where's that? Huzzah. So that is slightly to the left. <laughs> a little bit more to the right, a little bit bigger. The nose has got to get in there with the whatever metal she chooses. 
I say, I don't want her to gild the inside of the bowl here because that's going to look quite nice just on its own, showing the wood grain, the way it sweeps across here and then down in. Lovely. I think that'll do. So I'm liking the look of it. The secret. You need a piece of wood that is slightly longer, not going to have to be particularly a great deal longer, slightly longer, so you've got a bit of movement backwards and forwards, and a length of sandpaper, same length as the wood, and then even pressure as it's rotating. That way, you're not going to dip down in your bowl, and you're going to get a nice sharp edge on that bowl at the top. So, Bit more to go, get rid of some tool marks from the bowl gouge. We get the sandpaper in this little crevice around here. And I'll come back to you when I'm about to put some sand sealer on. <laughs> Yay! That's looking a bit prettier. Oh, lovely. Between the time it takes to get this gilded, it'll be sat in a light room, not direct sunlight, and it should, when it's being gilded, and when you look at the final product pictures, see a lot of greens appear in this kind of golden brown that it is at the moment. So it will change. Then over time, it will change even more. Okay, fine, I'll dust out that middle. Give you an impression of what it's gonna look like. You get the idea? Stick around, because I'm gonna get this completely finished, probably up to a thousand, maybe 3000 grit with the, with the grain of the wood. Get it all polished, get it to Lenore for gilding and she's gonna put a metal leaf in here. I'm not entirely sure what color yet. We'll find out in a few seconds. Mm -hmm. 